and I'm going to try to sing each step I take. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me. And with His loving hand, He leads the way. And with each breath, I whisper, I adore Thee. Oh, what joy to walk with Him each day. Each step I take, See what I feel uh, this morning, uh, like uh, I'm just, uh, I guess you would say, uh, uh, just an, an additive uh, more than anything. Uh, I feel like we've done had our sermon. Uh, what about y'all? Amen? Amen. I believe that. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I believe, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, this is God's service and uh, the message is not always through me. Uh, even though I'm the one up here, uh, I just believe in the Holy Spirit, and I believe He guides it, right? So uh, I believe in my heart that that sermon, uh, that was a good sermon, uh, believe it or not. And I'm just uh, so thankful for that there. Uh, I have to clear our minds, don't we? You know, in our hearts, and uh, we know what makes us feel better. And serving the Lord, uh, you just cannot seem to do it unless you're okay uh, with Him, uh, you know, through yourself there. Uh, but the Lord has put something on my heart, and uh, we're going to go through it the best we can today. Uh, you know, we're going to be in St. John chapter 4, going to start out with verses 23 through 24, but what I want to talk about this morning is walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. You know, there's two separate ways to walk through this life. Uh, one of them is uh, walking in the Spirit, uh, and the other is walking in the flesh. Walking in the flesh, or walking kind of conformed to the world. And that's what I see in my life, and I see in other people's life also, uh, that it's a battle constantly for our hearts, right? It's a battle going on whether to walk in the Spirit of God or to be walking conformed to the world. 
or walking in the flesh, so to speak. But it seems like to me in my life, I'm in a much better mood and uh, accepting life a lot better and enjoying things better uh, when I'm walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. But St. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, if you'd stand with me this morning for the reading of God's Word. The Bible says in verse 23, But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we humble our hearts before you today, we thank you, Almighty God, for what you have already done for us in our lives. Father, we just want to ask you today, God, Father, that you would open our hearts, God, that we may be receptive of the bread of life today. Father, the subject that you've sent today, Father, that we need to be walking in the Spirit of God. Father, it is so hard, God, in this world to be walking in the Spirit. But Father, we ask you, Lord, that if you will help us today, God, to be drawn closer to you. And Father, I pray, Lord, if there's one in our midst today, God, Father, that is still lost. God, this be a day, Lord, that they realize how much they are loved. Then you draw them, Father, to that day of salvation. God, this is your church. We are your people. Have your will and your way with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated this morning. You know, talking about this, uh, these first uh, couple of scriptures we're going to be in, it's talking about worship, isn't it? Talking about worshiping God in the Spirit. In the Spirit and in truth. You know, that's something that we say around here at Mount Arad uh, quite often, sometimes in a picking manner. But you know, when it comes down to it, it's the truth of life. If we are God's people, if we were saved children of God, we are to be out there in the world, not just in here, walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit of God. Because when this is going on in my life, I want you all to know that I'm having a much better life. When I'm walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit. I was given my message yesterday, I feel like, uh, when I got off work. When I got off work and I went home, my wife was home and she had Joanna. Uh, we've had Joanna ever since a, a Friday evening and we took her home before Sunday school this morning. And there where my wife was, uh, I went my grandbaby, and I walked in there and there it was on the floor, I think it was. And Anyway, uh, my wife walked out of the room. And I got down there with Joanna. And I got to playing with Joanna. And I got to realizing all the stuff in my life that I'm dealing with. And it was just kind of a slap in the face of how quick life goes by. Because I remember it was like yesterday uh, when that was my daughter, uh, Alex. Uh, and she was there with my wife. And I'd come home from work. And there they was. Uh, but yesterday, you know, uh, uh, 20 something years later, there I was in the same circumstance. The same circumstance. And I got to thinking, oh my gosh, where has time gone? Where has time gone? I want y'all to realize today that time is flashing by right before your eyes. And if we're not walking in the Spirit of God and living in the Spirit of God, we are missing out on the true blessings of the life that we've been given. So we need to try our best to get back to walking in the Spirit of God. When we're walking in the Spirit of God, I want you to know we recognize our blessings. We recognize our blessings. So yesterday I was recognizing how blessed I was to have my wife, to have my grandbaby, to have my job, to have my daughter, to be a pastor. All these things, I just take them for granted every day. But when you're walking in the Spirit of God, you recognize these things. We recognize them. How good we got it. We got it pretty good, don't we? We sure do. We got it really good. But we don't recognize these things unless we're walking in the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you what else. When we're walking in the Spirit of God, we think about what's important. What's important in life? What's important in life is our family. What's important in life is that we're, we're uh, in unity with our family. That we love one another. That we enjoy one another. We recognize these things when we're walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit of God. Nothing like it in the world. I tell you what, we are all drinking from the saucer, aren't we? Every one of us is drinking from the saucer. Psalm says that. My cup runneth over. How many of y'all's cups are runneth over today? Can we thank God for that today? 
And we need to ask him to bring us back to walking in the Spirit of God because that's when we start recognizing how good we got it. Because we all got it good. We're all able to be here today. We're all able to say amen. We're all able to clap our hands. I don't know about y'all, but ain't none of us starving, amen. So, you know, we got roofs over our head and shoes on our feet. We're a blessed people, and we need to recognize those things. But we don't recognize them when we're not walking in the Spirit of God. I don't know about y'all, but yesterday at work, uh, uh, I'm kind of kind of like Mr. Lewis there. I wasn't totally walking in the Spirit of God. Uh, you know, I was a little ill yesterday morning. I was the only manager there, and uh, they were calling me left and right, back and forth to the office. And the whole time back and forth to the office, I was seeing a bunch of young folks not working. And I tell you what, it was just a tough day. It was just a tough day. You know, uh, uh, the new generation don't know what work is. I'm telling you. But I, I might not have been walking in the Spirit. But when I got home, and I seen my granddaughter and my wife there, I want you to know I was just, a, I guess you would say, anointed by the Spirit of God. And I got to realizing... How good I got it in this life because I was in the Spirit. Because I was in the Spirit. It's when we get out of the Spirit, it's when we get overwhelmed with all the world's problems and the weight of the world. But when we're walking in the Spirit, I tell you what, it, it feels good. It feels good. You know, I think about the, uh, the moments I get up behind this sacred desk and in front of God's people. There is no freedom like it in the world. Why else do you think I'm so long-winded? Amen. Because I realize if I don't, when I get down, I may not ever get back up here again to tell you how much Jesus Christ loves you, man. No matter how uh, horrible your life is or what you're going through, He loves you. Amen. He loves you today. He loved you yesterday. He's going to love you tomorrow. And we need to get in that spirit today. Because I want you to know right now, I am not worried about what's going on at Food Drive. Praise God. I'm not worried about what's going on at home. All I'm worried about is the moment right now to tell you Jesus died for your sins, that you can have everlasting life through Him. But we got to get back and live it and walk it in the Spirit of God today. That's what we all need. If we're walking in the Spirit, we don't get broken hearted when our favorite football team loses like crazy. Amen. You know, how many of y'all was depressed yesterday? You know, amen, with college football. But I tell you what, my Jesus has never lost a game. I think I've said that before. But walking in the Spirit, whoo, thinking about how good God's been to us. Think about it, y'all. How much mercy has God had on you in your life? Can anybody remember what you done uh, uh, back in uh, 19 so-and-so uh, out here in the world? Can any of y'all remember that? I don't want to talk about those things, Brother John. I'm not asking you to talk about them, but I want to jog your memory today. Can you sit here today and say, my gosh, God's been merciful to me. God's been good to me. God has loved me. God has brought me through these things. But we, when we're not in the Spirit, we don't remember that, do we? We don't recognize how good God is. Well, I want you to know I'm recognizing today how good my God's been to me. I want to walk in the Spirit of God. I can handle temptation better when I'm walking in the Spirit. Some people claim to be walking in the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit of God and out there living uh, uh, just overwhelmed with sin, I tell you what, that scares me in this world today. Scares me in this world today. You know, a lot of people out there, and we're not supposed to judge, but I wonder if they ain't got a, a false sense of security in their salvation. Because the Holy Spirit in me helps me with temptation. Helps me to repent of my sins. Helps me to fight things in this life. You know, that's a, that's a, we're, we're, we're sealed. We're sealed with that, with that Spirit in our heart, helping us to walk in the Spirit of God in a lost and dying world. Amen. You know, walking in the Spirit, nothing like it, y'all. Nothing like it. You know, I just want to, I want to be happy, don't y'all? Don't y'all want to be happy? You know, uh, don't y'all want to enjoy the Spirit? Let's enjoy the Spirit. Let's turn over to Galatians, if you would, please. And we're going to talk about some of, the, some of the benefits of the Spirit of God. And we know these scriptures very well. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Going to go down to verse number 22 there. The Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. 
If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Church, I want to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. Don't y'all? I want to enjoy these things in my life. I want to enjoy being happy. I want to enjoy being forgiven. I want to enjoy being content with my life. I'm tired of so much in my life. What about you? I'm tired of being worried about stuff all the time. Anybody say amen? Amen. I'm tired of being stressed out all the time. Anybody else tired of that? Anybody tired of anxiety? Are we tired of these things? What about fear? Are we tired of being scared? We got a Father that's Almighty God and we walk around scared. I'm tired of being scared, aren't you? My Almighty God can handle anything. He can part the waters. He can move mountains. And He's my God. He's my Father in heaven. And I tell you what, I want to start enjoying that. I'm tired of being angry. How many of y'all stay angry all the time? Amen. Don't we all sometimes get a little angry? Amen. Well, how many of us in here get a lot angry? Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Praise God. How many of us get a lot angry at each other sometimes? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, uh, hey, that's part of life. But, you know, through the Spirit, Spirit of God, we can overcome these things. How about letting others control us? Letting others control us. You know, uh, isn't it up to you what kind of mood you're in? Have you ever thought about that? You know, uh, God woke me up today and this is my day that God's created for me. I should be joyful and find gladness in it. And then all of a sudden somebody comes along and says, no, it's not your day, it's mine. And just takes it away from you. You know, and you have to live that day, but it's no longer yours. Who took it? The devil. The devil. Yeah, we still talk about the devil up here in Mount Arad. Amen. The moment y'all tell me I can't, I'm gone. Because the devil is our enemy. And he's out there to take our day. I'm tired of other people controlling my life. What about y'all? I want to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. I want to enjoy being God's son. Amen. You say, well, that's a bold statement. That's what the Bible says. We can become sons and daughters of Almighty God through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. We can walk in the Spirit of God. We don't have to be mad, worried, stressed out all the time. We choose to be that way. Well, that's a bold statement, isn't it? Amen. Yeah, I'm making a lot of bold statements today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I tell you what, but that's okay because I want to boldly proclaim that we have a spirit within us and if we can learn to walk in that spirit, we'll have a much better day. Amen. Amen. We'll have a much better day because I'm tired. I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of being angry. I'm tired of being stressed out. I'm tired of these things. And you know, I don't have to deal with them. Don't have to deal with them. Sure don't. And neither do you. God's not a respecter of persons. Just because I'm up here don't make me no better. If you ask me, it makes me the chief of sinners, like Paul said. He got me up here to show you the definition of God's forgiveness. If he can forgive me, brother, you got it made. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Yes, walking in the Spirit of God. Boy, the devil don't want nobody walking in the Spirit because we forgive one another. We love one another. We're more patient with one another. We're nicer to one another. We got a better tone in our voice towards one another. How many of y'all's uh, uh, loved ones, you just know what kind of mood, what kind of day it's going to be by the tone of their voice? <laughs> Anybody like it? Let me tell you something. When I see my wife, you know, she says I'm always picking on her. Uh, you know, and I do, praise God. Uh, uh, that's just part of being a preacher's wife. Amen. You know, uh, uh, amen. Praise the Lord. But when I hear her voice in the mornings, I know what kind of day it's going to be. <laughs> and when she hears mine, she knows what kind of day it's going to be. Wake up, church. Your loved one's days in your hands. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? Just because you're having a bad day, don't give you the right to take somebody else's day. Amen? Amen? You know, just because your Cheerios ain't good this morning. (laughs) And y'all know where that went. Amen? But that don't mean you can do it to somebody else's Cheerios. (laughs) Jesus Christ loves us, y'all. We need to be walking in the Spirit of God. 
our families, our homes, our workplaces, our church would be a better place if we were all walking in the Spirit of God. We wouldn't be so stressed out. We wouldn't be so worried. We wouldn't be so fearful. We'd be strong, loving and caring, long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith. We'd have meekness and temperance. How many of y'all need a little help with temperance? Amen. You know, my wife said that first uh, louder than anybody. Uh, I, you know, I just want to praise my God for that. Amen. Amen. Hey, I got everybody to clap. Oh, for your old man. Amen. Temperance, church. We need to walk in the Spirit of God. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I get up and I go work in the public and I do a pretty good job with this church face thing, but I'm pretty ticked off most of the day. Yes. I've seen a lot of nods right there. A lot of y'all living in anger, ain't you? I'm mad today. Nothing's going to make me happy. I don't care who you are. I'm going to run your day too. Boy, ain't that pretty much the mood of everybody? Ain't that pretty much the mood? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, I can hide it pretty good. But I want y'all to know we're walking in the Spirit of God. Man. Verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Boy, I tell you what, I can come to church on Sunday and I can get up here and praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I can do all this stuff. But let me tell you something, if I'm not walking in the Spirit of God on Monday and Tuesday, and, and Wednesday's pretty good, got church Wednesday night, and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, let me tell you something, I'm full of something, ain't I? We need to get real and start walking in the Spirit of God throughout there in this world. It's not just good for you. It's good for the people you care about. It's good for the people you love. It's also good for the kingdom of God, isn't it? Amen. And that's what we're here for. It's the kingdom of God. Not this old world. Not this old world. Jesus loves you, man, and wants you to be happy. Wants you to have fun. Wants you to laugh and love and live. You know, we're not living, walking through life angry and scared all the time. And disappointed? That's not living. That's existing. I want to live, don't y'all? I want to live because Jesus died that I might live. But are we living? Are we living? Or are we just letting one day go after another? You know, I was thinking, my goodness gracious, this morning, Joanna was laying there on the couch. My wife done had her all fixed up, you know, ready to go. We had to drop her off at the kid's house. And uh, I looked over at her, and man, I don't know if I was in the Spirit or what, or, or it's just such a, a comparison. It was like, that's Alex. Joanna who? That is Alex, man, right laying right there. I mean, a spitting image of Alex right there. And she really is. You put those uh, three-month pictures together, uh, and she's Alex. And then I was thinking, man, I'm getting to live this again. This is even better. I'm getting to take her home. Hey, man. Hey, praise God, you know. And the older that she gets, the better it's going to get because I'm going to spoil her and give her everything the son-in-law can't and then take her home. <laughs> or won't. How about that? Let's word it that way. Y'all, life is going by. My life is going by. For my very eyes. And I know some of y'all looking at me saying, well, you spring chicken, you need a hush. <laughs> and some of you looking at me saying, yeah, you old preacher. <laughs> That's right. Still younger than you. <laughs> and always will be. Amen. <laughs> and always will be. Praise God. Amen. I pick on Brother Riley. You know, I call him Grandpa. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, but I got to thinking about that, uh, you know, because I don't know about how old your daughter is, but uh, I, she'd be old enough to be my mom if you if you were my granddad. So I don't want to pick on Rhonda's age back there or nothing, but I think I just better call you pops. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> spirit and truth, Rhonda. Spirit and truth. Amen. I tell y'all what, y'all, we need to live in the Spirit of God. We need to say we're living in it, and we need to be walking in the Spirit of God. Walking in the Spirit of God. Because when we're walking in the Spirit of God, we're a much better people. We're much better people for ourselves, and we're much better people for those that are around us. And Jesus Christ, when He was on earth, He walked in the Spirit of God, did He not? That's why He was sinless. Because He was walking in the Spirit of God. But I'll tell you what, now I don't think as long as we're in this flesh, we can become sinless. I haven't found that yet. 
don't believe it. Because if that was possible, Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to shed His blood on the cross at Calvary. But I want you to know, we can, we can be a lot happier than we seem to be. We don't have to let work just control us and take our lives from us. We don't have to be that way. We let that happen. We let that happen. We don't let that person from back in 1970 or 60 or 80 control us in 2020. We choose for that to happen. Let's take back our lives today and walk in the Spirit of God. Man, I want to go fishing. Don't y'all? Hey, man, I want to eat fish. Praise the Lord. And then I want to go fishing again. And eat more fish. Yeah. And then I want to go fishing again. I want to laugh. I want to see my wife laugh. I want to see my daughter laugh. I want to see my son-in-law laugh. I want to see my grandbaby. I can't wait. This baby's full of stuff. She just wants to speak. She's she just a mumbling away. She is wanting to speak. Praise God. When she starts talking, I'm telling you by the women in my family, she's not ever going to shut up, brother. She's going to keep talking. Keep talking. Praise God. We're going to have conversations. Amen. Living in the Spirit, y'all. I want y'all to know that infant baby is just teaching me a whole lot. More time I'm with her, it's making me realize... Realize how much we just throw our lives in the trash for the old world that we live in. And we'll let people control us. And situations. I'm tired of so many things, aren't you? Tired of it. Y'all, we can, we can have victory over these things. Victory. How would y'all like to have victory today over worry and stress, heartache, disappointment? Wouldn't you have to have victory over that? Amen. Praise God. Well, I can't snap my finger and, and uh, just say, okay, you got victory. You know, that, that, that's, it's a war. It's a war. You know, Paul says, every day is a battle for my heart. Every day is a battle for my heart. Every day, man. If we're not fighting this fight every day, we're getting whipped. <laughs> you know? Because uh, we got to fight this fight. You know, we're in our Bible study and it's called War Room, Right? War room. There's a, there's a purpose behind that title. You know, there's a purpose the author gave it that title because we refuse to believe and accept that we're in a war. War. A spiritual war. And when we're walking in the Spirit, we realize that. But when we're walking in the flesh or confound to the world, they don't even acknowledge that in our minds. We just go through life mad, scared, Every now and then we have moments of joy, moments of happiness. Then it fades away. And then we'll be mad and scared again. Then you wake up like me, realizing I'm grandpa. Hey, man, I got a grandbaby laying there on the couch. And I look back and I think, golly, man, time sure does fly. Time sure does fly. I pray, I pray to my God that he lets me live a long time. You know, I want to be one of these old, honorary old men. Any other man won't be a, just, a, just an old, honorary old man. Amen. Well, you're going to have to be an old, honorary old man to put up with your old, honorary old wife. Amen. You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, y'all. Let's cut the chase. Man, we need to learn to walk in the Spirit of God. We can walk through here, you know, if, uh, if uh, Biden gets president... God's still my God. If Trump gets president, God's still my God. If they vote in this mess, God's still my God. If the doctor tells me I got this, God's still my God. If that person tomorrow uh, makes me mad and a hornet as soon as I get to work, I'm not going to let it ruin my day because God is still my God. He is the God of my salvation. In Him I shall put my trust. In Him I shall put my trust. But we're all confounded to the world. Walking in the flesh. Letting all these things just beat us up all the time. And in the process of beating you up, it's beating the people you love up. The people you care about up. Amen. When I have a bad day, I want you to know I take it out on my wife. I sure do. I don't realize it sometimes, but I do. And I confess that. I know that. And I'm sure if she thought about it, she realized she'd do it too. 
But we're in this together. In this together. I want to take a closer walk with my God. I want to learn to walk in the Spirit that He's talking about. Because if I'm not walking in the Spirit, I'm not enjoying the fruit of the Spirit. See what I'm saying? Not, see, the devil don't want you to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. Last thing he wants is some Spirit-filled Christian walking around upon the face of this earth. That's the last thing he wants. But that needs to be our desire. I want to walk around happy, joyful, content, have a little temperance. Amen. Look forward to tomorrow. Look forward to the rest of the day. Have you ever said, oh, I dread tomorrow. Anybody ever said that? Do you realize that tomorrow may be your last tomorrow? Boy, I sure hate to know I dreaded it. But we do sometimes, don't we? Live every moment to the fullest. Every moment to the fullest. I want to go to Philippians. I was determined to uh, uh, get y'all out of here because we got so much going on today. Uh, but we're going to be preaching again at 4 o'clock down at Real Foot Lake. Amen? And guess what? There won't be no denominational sign in front of us. How about that? Never know what might happen down there. We're just going to give it to God and see how it turns out. Amen? But we'll go to Philippians chapter 3, if you would, please. I want to call out a, a couple of verses there. You know, a lot of times in our life, uh, it's just so much baggage that we pack around uh, that denies us uh, the Spirit of God, denies us the fruit uh, that the Spirit of God gives, like love and patience and peace and long-suffering and temperance. A lot of times it's a lot of baggage that we're carrying around. Baggage, I'm saying things that are in the past. Things that are in the past that we just pack around. I refuse to let it go. You know, it, it's, a, it's my crutch. If somebody wants to know what's wrong with me, I can tell them how bad my life was back then, and, and that, that, that's my explanation. Hey, that's normal. I've got a few of those, praise God. Yeah, man, I sure do. But it's denying us the fruit of the Spirit. It's denying us uh, what we could be, what we could become, what we, how much fun we could have. Oh, yes, and I know every, everything's different and some things we're, we're going to hang on to and that's just part of life. But I'm talking about these things that we know in our heart that we could deal with and let go. Over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Brother, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I bet y'all have read those before. And so often people have I've had this question before. What's that mark? What are you talking about? The prize of the high... What is the high calling of God? Well, you're the preacher. Haven't you received the high calling of God? No, that's not what that's talking about. It's not what that's talking about. The high calling of God is to be able to walk in the Spirit of God. To walk in the Spirit of God. That's the high calling of God right there. To be able to walk through this life and be happy and joyful and deal with things as they come our way. The Bible teaches us, you know, we, we're, 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 we're weighed on, we're, we're beat up, uh, you know, but we are not destroyed. We are not destroyed. We are still here today. We have the opportunity today to say, man, I think I'll take the rest of this walk of life seriously. And I'm just going to give it all to my God. And I'm going to learn to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Let me tell you something, when you're walking in the Spirit, you'll almost just get back and laugh at some of the stuff that you see in this world. But then if you get way in the Spirit, you'll almost cry about some of it too. How blind the devil has gotten some folks. I don't know about y'all, but... Tomorrow... Could be 
And I've said this before. As long as I'm up here, I'm going to continue to say it. It is the, the first day, brother. Pops, Mom, sister. Tomorrow is the first day of the rest of my life. The rest of my life. And as I see my wife and Joanna there, I'm thinking, well, that's 20 something years. James 4.14. Life's like a vapor. It's going to vanish away. I'm going to blink my eye. It's going to be 20 something years later. I'm 48. That's going to put me in my early 70s. If God lets me live that long. I think I'm going to take it serious today. And I'm going to say, you know what? Tomorrow's the first day of the rest of my life. Anybody want to take a closer walk with thee? Is there anything in your life today that you just want to get rid of? That you want God to help you with? Is there anybody in your life that you love, that you just, you want want help for? You may be that help. Any of y'all want to walk in the Spirit? You can. Just ask God to help you. He loves you that much. I want to be happy, sir, the rest of my life. And if somebody else is mad, then I just want to pray for them. (laughs) And not let it make me mad too. Life's short. You know, if there was things in my life that I haven't already repented of, (laughs) holding that baby would sure make me want to repent. (laughs) You know, one of my dreams right now is to watch her graduate. Is that crazy? Does anybody want to have a first day of the rest of their life tomorrow? Let's cut the chase. It ain't about you or the person beside you. It's about you and the rest of your life. Mom and daddy, ain't about that. Husband, wife, it's about you today. Who do you want to be? How do you want to live the rest of your life? I want to be pressing towards a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He loves you today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts before you and we thank you, God Almighty, for being God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that you've sent our way today, God, through Mr. Loris, God, and and the one that you laid on my heart today, Father. God, we want to walk in the Spirit. Lord, we can claim it all day long. But God, our own emotions within our heart tells the truth. God, if there's anyone in our midst today, Lord, who would just like you to turn up the volume of a little spirit in their life, Father, I pray that we will knock and seek and ask at the altar of God. Father, I pray if there's one in our midst today, Lord, Father, not sure of their salvation, God. Father, your word teaches us that we will know you are in our heart. God, help us to recognize and know that you're there. Father, we love you. We pray for Jesus to be lifted up because it's in his name we pray. Amen.